மலையக தமிழர்கள் இலங்கைக்கு கொண்டுவரப்பட்டு இருநூறு ஆண்டுகள் பூர்த்தியாகின்ற நிலையில் தமிழ் காங்கிரஸ் கட்சியின் ஜி ஜி பொன்னம்பலம் அவர்கள் அவர்களுக்கான பிரஜா உரிமை வழங்குகின்ற விடயத்தில் நடந்து கொண்ட விதம் சம்பந்தமாக இன்னமும் பலர் தவறான புரிதலோடு இருக்கும் இந்த சூழலில் அவற்றை தெளிவுபடுத்தியதோடு மட்டுமல்லாமல் அவர் சார்பில் கட்சியின் சார்பில் மன்னிப்பு கோரியிருக்கிறார் கஜேந்திரகுமார் பொன்னம்பலம் எம்பி அவர்கள் என்னுடைய பாட்டனராகோ அல்லது அகில இலங்கை தமிழ் காங்கிரஸோ மலையக தமிழ் மக்களுடைய பிரஜாருமே சார்ந்த விடயத்தில் வந்து தவறு செய்திருந்தால் அதுக்கு நான் மனப்பூர்வமாக வந்து மன்னிப்பு கேட்க தயார் இது குற்றச்சாட்டு என்னென்றால் வந்து மலையக தமிழ் மக்களோட பிரஜாவுமே பறிக்கிற சட்டத்துக்கு வந்து ஜி ஜி பொன்னம்பலமும் அகில இலங்கை தமிழ் காங்கிரஸும் வந்து உடந்தையாக இருந்தவன் நான் உண்மையிலே என்ன நடந்தேன் உங்களுக்கு விளங்கப்படுத்துகிறேன் இந்த நான் சொல்ல வருகின்ற விஷயத்தில் வந்து நான் பொய் சொல்கிறேன் என்று யாரும் நிரூபித்தால் அதுக்கும் நான் முகம் கொடுக்க தேவை இந்த விடயம் சம்பந்தமாக சமீபத்தில் வழங்கிய செவ்வி ஒன்றில் அவர் தெளிவுகளை ஏற்படுத்தியதோடு பாராளுமன்றத்தில் அந்த விடயத்தை தெளிவுபடுத்தி மன்னிப்பு கோருவதற்கும் தான் தயங்கப் போவதில்லை என்பதை பதிவு செய்திருக்கிறார் கஜேந்திரகுமார் பொன்னம்பலம் அவர்கள் டூ ஹண்ட்ரட் இயர்ஸ் கம்மிங் ஆஃப் தி அப் கண்ட்ரி தமிழ் பீப்புள் டு ஸ்ரீலங்கா அண்ட் தி ப்ரொசஷன் ஆல்சோ டுக் பிளேஸ் இன் ஜாஃப்னா அண்ட் வென் ஐ டுக் பார்ட் இன் தட் ப்ரொசஷன் one individual walked up to me and asked me at least now are you on behalf of your party and your grandfather willing to apologize to the upcountry tamils for disenfranchising them uh, in 1948 so sir whilst uh, that question uh, that was asked to me hurt me quite a bit I thought uh, I'll take the opportunity today to state our position on that matter because quite uh, quite clearly uh, the upcountry Tamil people are represented quite well today the honorable Manoganeshan and the honorable Radha Krishnan are bringing this uh, adjournment motion uh, I don't think uh, I need to speak on their behalf they have their own representatives who are very eloquent in doing that so uh, i wish to put the record straight with with regards to uh, where our party stands on the question of disenfranchisement that took place uh, 75 years ago as you know sir the act that disenfranchised the upcountry tamils was the ceylon citizenship act number 18 of 1948 now when that act was uh, brought it disenfranchised the upcountry tamils because the conditionalities that were introduced into the act in order to claim citizenship or qualify for citizenship meant that one person had to go back two generations and naturally the upcountry tamils failed to uh, establish their residences with regards to their grandparents and great grandparents and as a result uh, they lost uh, citizenship that was the practical way in which that citizenship lost now sir quite categorically we would like to put on record that the ceylon citizenship act number 18 of 1948 was opposed by the tamil congress we were not in government we were seated in opposition and we opposed it at that time the tamil congress was united there was no split within the party my grandfather g g ponnamblam the deputy leader mr s j v chelvanayagam and all others opposed that act and uh, so the act that literally disenfranchised the upcountry tamils was opposed by the tamil congress we had no party to play in the disenfranchisement but of course soon after independence prime minister uh, uh, prime minister d s senanayaka wanted to have a multi ethnic uh, government and he approached the tamil congress to join the government and when negotiations commenced uh, we 
uh, put as a condition that the Ceylon Citizenship Act number 18 of 48 must be repealed because of this grave injustice that happened to the Tamil people. Uh, and in the course of those negotiations, Prime Minister Sri Jawaharlal Nehru was also asked to intervene and negotiations commenced and eventually Prime Minister D.S. Renayaka agreed that whilst he will not repeal the Ceylon citizenship law, he will bring in a new law, the Indian-Pakistani citizenship law number no. 3, Act number no. 3 of 1949, uh, he said that he will bring and that law to a great extent uh, reduced the conditionalities. The demand from the Tamil parties, that is not only the Tamil Congress but also the CWC, Mr. Uh, the late Mr. Thundaman, uh, the upcountry leaders, was that the condition should be made to five years residency. Because that is the condition that normally any country, any person who goes to another country, if you can show residency for five years, uh, then you, uh, you are entitled to apply for citizenship. And unless you get disqualified for, by certain other, uh, certain other extraneous matters, uh, you ought to get citizenship. However, D.S. Aranaika uh, did not agree to that. He agreed to only 10 years. That is to show that you are present and resident in Sri Lanka for 10 years prior to that particular date of the act coming into force. Despite that, the Tamil parties and Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru continued to, uh, continue to bargain and eventually they managed to succeed in getting the government to agree for individuals 10 years residency, to show 10 years residency, and for those married to show 7 years residency. Now that act would have effectively meant that the upcountry Tamils, 85%, at least 85% of, of the upcountry Tamils, if they had applied under that act, they would have qualified for citizenship. Unfortunately, the Tamil Congress split. Mr. S.J. Vitalvanagam broke away and he joined with the CWC at that time. And uh, the, uh, the upcountry Tamil leaders and Mr. Chelvanayagam insisted that it should be a five-year five -year term of residency that is the condition to qualify for citizenship. And they asked the Tamil people, since the Act refused to uh, agree on the five-year uh, residency, to boycott it. Now that Act, Act number 3 of 1949, the India-Pakistani Citizenship Act, basically was only going to be in force for two years. Within the two years, everybody needed to apply. And for the first one and a half years of those two years after that act was passed, the boycott was on, and in the last six months, when everybody realized that DSA Nanayaka was not going to back down, they called off the boycott, and in fact the late Mr. Saumimithi Muthi Thundaban became a citizen formally of this country through the Ceylon citizenship, uh, uh, through the India-Pakistani citizenship law. So the tragedy, honorable presiding member, is that when 85% of the upcountry Tamils who lost their citizenship under the Ceylon citizenship law could have obtained their citizenship under the India-Pakistani citizenship law, because of the boycott, ultimately only about 15% were able to gain citizenship. The remaining 85% were stateless. And it is those eight, that 85% that was sought to be dealt with under the Srima Shastri Pact, which effectively meant that half of that 85% who were stateless was repatriated to India. Honorable member, you now, have two more minutes. Those people who criticized the Tamil Congress, the Tamil Congress supported and voted for the second law, that is Act Number no. 3 of 1949, the India-Pakistani Citizenship Law, which was brought to bring back citizenship. To bring back citizenship. Right? We did not support the Ceylon Citizenship Law, which disenfranchised the upcountry Tamils. We opposed that. Now, if the argument, honorable presiding member, is that 85% victory 
is in fact not a victory unless it is 100 percent then i am willing to wholeheartedly apologize to the upcountry tamils unreservedly i am willing to apologize if 85 percent victory is in fact not a victory that it has to be 100 percent or nothing else and if since the tamil congress supported a law that would have given 85 percent of those disenfranchised citizenship if that is wrong i am certainly willing to unreservedly apologize but the question is those very same people who accuse us of betraying the upcountry tamils for supporting the india pakistani act number no. three of 1949 had no qualms in supporting the srima shastri pact which evicted half the tamil population half the upcountry tamil population from this country more than half more than half that evicted them to a country that is that they don't nothing about they might be uh, tamils please. of recent indian origin please but as far as they were all concerned sri lanka was their home they were born here they knew no other place time is up right evicting that if evicting that can be supported then they must also apologize because it's a bit of bigger betrayal to support the india pakistani citizenship uh, to, to, please to, to 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 support the shima shastri pact honorable please wind up supported the india pakistani citizenship law so therefore sir honorable please i wish to up. say wholeheartedly that as far as the tamil national people's front is concerned our view is quite categorical we will un please wind up support every single step taken on behalf of the upcountry tamils there will be no conditionalities approach uh, uh, applied to support whatever steps on either side of this house that Please is taken up. on behalf of the upcountry tamils uh, and uh, and we will continue uh, to work closely Please. with everybody uh, in that regard thank you sir thank you nootuk 85 vidamaga prajavarume perakoodiya oru sattate pulayundu solluvoramaga irundal அது தவறுண்டு சொல்கிறோமாக இருந்தால் நான் வந்து அது புல அது ஒரு துரோகம் யாரும் சொல்லி நம்ம என்றால் நான் அந்த தவறுண்டு சொல்கிறதுக்கு வந்து நான் மன்னிப்பு கேட்க தயார் இது போன்ற இன்னும் பல செய்திகளோடு மீண்டும் ஒரு செய்தி பொறியில் சந்திக்கும் வரை வணக்கம் Oh, yeah.